Hello. Um, my name is Bill Shrubman. Uh, that's where I work. At WGBH here in Boston. I make kids' games uh, with a small team to go with the TV shows that we make for public broadcasting. You might recognize some of these if you have kids or if you were watching when you were a kid. Arthur, Curious George, Martha Speaks. These are the kinds of uh, educational shows that we produce uh, nationally for PBS. Uh, we also produce apps, um, not surprisingly. But I also have a background in photography. Uh, I started out in theater and Here's a picture of Mark Rylance from the Royal Shakespeare Company. I did a lot of theatre production uh, headshots. Actors need headshots for their photographs. These are some of mine from the 1980s. Uh, this is also how I met my wife. This was the day I met her. <laughs> 25 years later, she's still uh, having to smile for the camera. So I like taking pictures, um, like many of us. I feel it gives me a different way of looking at the world around. I like patterns, uh, interesting things. This was a dinner setting that my daughter set out for herself. Uh, giraffe. I probably didn't need to say giraffe today. Um, I look for patterns. I look for interesting ways to represent everyday things. But mostly it's just for fun. Um, but it has on occasionally uh, allowed me to travel. This was a trip I took to China as a photographer, um, pre Tiananmen Square. Um, but I take pictures on vacation too. And like many of us, I've messed around uh, with my pictures in Instagram, a uh, different way to just enjoy and share pictures. Uh, Simon LeBon, bottom left. I've also encouraged my kids to take pictures. Uh, this was taken by my youngest when she was nine. My oldest, uh, watching this on live stream right now, uh, raised money for two years to get herself to Africa and came back with a stomach bug, but also some beautiful photographs. So I'm, I'm proud of, of both of them, and I'm showing their pictures here for the first time in public. So one way or another, I spend a lot of time with these two worlds. Uh, on the left, Ruff Ruffman, one of the characters in a TV show that we make, and the, we make web games and apps to go with, with that. And that's my dog Nelly. Uh, I think in both cases the glasses are cosmetic. <laughs> so I've tried to find ways to introduce photography into the work we do at WGBH because I really see a power that it can offer. Uh, this is a new service, a, a website with beautiful photographs from the Associated Press that I created with a small team for PBS. I grew up in England where we had a daily kind of kids primetime TV show called John Craven's News Round. And that put real news in front of us as kids every day. And coming to America, I was amazed that kids don't see news. Um, or see news images. They may be see what their parents see, but nothing is passed or prepared for them. So this was a, an attempt, to, an antidote for that. Uh, we chose strong images from the week's news, uh, Twitter-length captions, and gave kids a view of the outside world that we think they maybe wouldn't have seen otherwise. It helped when there was colorful images, but that didn't necessarily have to mean uh, that they, had, they were playful, we could cover real news uh, with appealing, strong photography. Here we're using the camera in the iPad um, to create a game based around Common Core math standards for first and second grade. This is augmented reality. Uh, the kids place markers uh, around the table or around the room, and the game, a, a digital game on, on the app, produces uh, prompts and game challenges, and then the camera picks up the markers and superimposes on the screen uh, images that represent, in this case, uh, the values uh, here, five sushi representing the number five. 
So I found online uh, pictures from a school that was using this exactly as intended. They put kids uh, to work looking to solve number problems. They put the markers around the library and kids had to move around and find the pictures uh, and the markers that matched uh, the number problems. So this gave kids a real uh, get up and go uh, that probably wasn't available with just simple kind of drill uh, worksheets. Um, here we use the camera on a Curious George counting game. Um, the laptop or the webcam picks up the kid's movement and George jumps uh, only when you do. Um, as part of a counting game, he counts along. It's, it's a way to get kids moving. It's a way to encourage kids to participate in a way that they probably wouldn't otherwise. Here we're using camera and these are tests for a prototype that my colleagues are making on a project called Next Generation Preschool Math. It's around getting preschool uh, kids interested in specific math problems by introducing iPad technology and what the affordances are, what the, what the technology can do. So here putting the kid in the game gives them a different investment in the game. These are also collaborative games, so it encourages conversation and math talk. Kids are talking to each other about the math that they're doing, and that's one of the key goals of the project. Again, just using the camera that's present uh, on the device. Here are some images from an app that we're making right now to help kids with autism understand what faces are capable of. And it's not just the uh, typical kind of happy, sad, but we're doing that too. Um, this is also, for example, looking to see who's listening, who's ready to hear a, a conversation. Kids on the autism spectrum often have a hard time knowing that you're ready to have that kind of joint attention with them to start speaking. So we're using the iPhone or the iPad to prompt them in a game situation and introduce faces. But again, with the camera, we can put kids in the game and they, with, in therapy, for example, can practice specific emotions or specific expressions and have a different level of investment in the, the, the learning. Here's an experiment that we did. Um, again, a math project. We took a bunch of these little blue cameras to um, kindergarten classrooms around Boston and Cambridge, and we asked kids to look for triangles. And ahead of time, the teachers told us that we would fail at this because kids were just learning their shape, and if a, I don't want to get too technical, but if the pointy bit was pointing down, they wouldn't recognize it. They would recognize the triangle if the pointy bit was pointing up. But kids proved us wrong, and we got a chance to see what they see because we have their pictures and what you see from these images is that they found the triangles and these are the ones on the right are pictures taken by kids they found triangles within things they set up pens to make triangular shapes um, here they framed rectangles through the viewfinder the camera's got a viewfinder on the back and made a triangle out of the rectangle and then soon they were all doing that because they were communicating with each other they were producing the content they weren't just consuming it and they were sharing. Again, that communication was, was fabulous. Uh, this is my favorite picture, though, on the right. The principal of the school we were at knew that we were taking pictures of triangles, and he stood there as we walked by and said, look, I'm a triangle. And the kid took a picture of the negative <laughs> space between his legs. So when I started out, I had a Olympus OM10. Now cameras are in many smartphones, probably all new smartphones. If we equate that number with this meerkat, we see a rapid growth of smartphone ownership. And what that means is this is a ubiquitous device. It means it's in every pocket. It's probably in most of yours. And increasingly, if you have kids, most of theirs too. So we've got a real opportunity here to take advantage of the appeal that photography gives, the investment in making that kids can get with taking pictures. And it means that you can encourage kids to go on a treasure hunt for letters or play number games using photography. Uh, you can encourage them to be citizen scientists. They can look 
at the world with not just with fresh eyes or look in a different way, but see things that you wouldn't normally be able to see with the naked eye, such as how a plant changes over the course of a week or how it might tilt during the day. If you take pictures, just go to the same place, take a picture, take a picture, and, and see the change over time. There's a, there's a real power in what can be achieved with, with, with photography. And what that means is the most powerful app that you have for education Maybe the camera. Thank you.